In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, we gather now on this 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. And in the Gospel today, Jesus gives us the mandate on how to live the Christian life, how to live in this world to get to the world that knows no end, the eternal life with God. And that is to love God and to love our neighbor. We pause now to ask for the grace and strength to do that and for the times that we have failed in any way. We ask the Lord now for his pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you are the Lord of love and compassion. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you offered yourself as a sacrifice to save us from sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, your love reaches into the depths of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift you are faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, fear the Lord your God and keep throughout the days of your lives all his statutes and commandments which I enjoin on you today and thus have a long life. Hear then Israel and be careful to observe them that you may grow and prosper the more in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Take to heart these words which I enjoin on you today. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. I love you, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, the Levitical priests were many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But Jesus, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him since he lives forever to make intercession for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priests, to offer sacrifice day after day, 
first for his own sins and then for those of people. He did that once and for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests. But the word of the oath, which was taken after the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, the first is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is like this. You shall love the neighbor, your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying, He is one, and there is no other than he and to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I want to share with you today a true story about a person who I will refer to as Albert whose wife had been suffering with Alzheimer's for five years. She had deteriorated to the point of not recogni recognizing anyone, including her husband, Albert. Every morning at 9 a.m., Albert made a point of having breakfast with his wife at her nursing home. He would sit with her, and he would tell her stories of their life together, their wedding day, their children, and all the other experiences they shared over some 50 years of marriage. One morning, Albert wasn't feeling well. He was struggling to, to get out of bed and get himself ready to go to the nursing home. Nonetheless, he pushed himself as hard as he could, not wanting to be late for breakfast with his wife. Seeing that he wasn't feeling well, his daughter said to him, Dad, why don't you stay home in bed today and, and rest? In any way, you know Mom doesn't remember you. Albert replied, You're right. Your mother doesn't remember me, but I remember her. I'm not sure if there's a better example of unconditional love. Albert reminds us of what true love means, that we give of ourselves even when we get nothing in return, even when our gestures of kindness are forgotten, 
and even when others fail to understand why we are trying so hard and it doesn't seem to get us anywhere. In particular, Albert teaches us something about God's love. Even when we forget God, God always remembers us. Even when we neglect God, God always takes care of us. And no matter how far we try to run away from God, he never stops pursuing us. And no matter how hard at times we try to hide from God, he never stops trying to find us. My friends, in the gospel today, the scribe asked Jesus about the greatest commandment of the law. What is it? And Jesus replies by echoing the words of Moses in the first reading today. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. In this commandment, Jesus reveals the key to a holy life. But how is it possible for us to love God when we cannot see him? And that is why Jesus joins the first commandment to the second commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The two commandments are inseparable, love of God and love of neighbor. What Jesus is telling us here is that you cannot devote yourself to God, mind, heart, soul, and body, and then neglect your neighbor. You cannot spend all day gazing at the heavens in prayer and then refuse to lower your eyes to look at your sisters and brothers around you. Jesus' fastening of the love of God and love of neighbor challenges us to weigh the value of our own worship in God's eyes. Does what we do today here at Mass make a difference in what we say and what we do out in the world each and every day? This week, we will celebrate the Feast of All Saints and All Souls, reminding us of the limited time that we have here on earth and that one day, like our loved ones who have gone before us, we will stand before God. We cannot help but be sobered each time we read or listen to the criteria for the final judgment found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25. Lord, when do we see you hungry or thirsty, naked, sick, in prison, or a stranger, and not provide for you in your need? And the Lord is clear in his response. I assure you, whatever you did for the least of my sisters and brothers, you did for me. My friends, the saints who have gone before us understood that our life shared with others, whether within our family or in a religious community, is the privileged place for us growing in the likeness of Christ, the God who assumed our humanity as so to touch the leper, to welcome the outcast, to forgive offenses, to become a servant to others, and to reveal the goodness and the love of God our Father. The gospel today is truly the summation of our lives in what it means to truly be a Christian. It is our mandate of what will lead us from this life to eternal life. It finds its expression in the corporal and the spiritual works of mercy, which include feeding the hungry, visiting the sick, clothing the naked, educating the ignorant, and praying for the conversion of sinners. By making daily intentional decisions to love others, we are showing our love for God. And in so doing, that love goes stronger within us. Is it easy? No. Do we do it 24-7? Absolutely not. But through the power of daily prayer and the very grace of God, we can accomplish so many more things that in our own weak human condition are impossible. But when we ask God for help, we know that he wants nothing more from us than to truly love him above all things and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Every Sunday, we gather to pause and to remember. 
We remember the great love God showed us in sending his son to die for each and every one of us. We remember how Jesus gave us his body and blood in the form of bread and wine. And as we receive the gift of his love, we ask him to make our hearts like his, filled with unconditional, sacrificial love. It seems to me that in our country today that is so sharply divided and sadly within our own church, if we truly want to make a difference, then we will all commit ourselves to loving our neighbors as we love God, as we love ourselves. In so doing, little by little, the world will finally be transformed by the power of God's love. And when you get discouraged and you feel you cannot make a difference and no one seems to care, do what I do. Remember the words of Albert to his daughter, words that are etched in my heart and in my mind today. Your mother doesn't remember me, but I remember her. Amen. And together now let us pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My sisters and brothers, gathered as a family, united in faith and baptism, let us with confidence bring our needs and prayers before our loving God and Father. For leaders of the church, may God send his spirit to love and strengthen them as they minister to his people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in authority, may God infuse them with his wisdom and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live with the burden of hatred or racism, may God grant them his loving comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the Lord's teaching shape our lives and his grace conform us evermore to his heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died, may God invite them into their final resting place in his presence for eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, we place these needs before you and trust in your promises to love us and give us what we truly need. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this water and wine, we become to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from all of my sins. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our bishop, and all the clergy, the religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And may that peace now enter your hearts and your homes and all with whom you share peace today. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayer now for Father Baker's canonization. Lord, you gave us your servant, Nelson Baker, as an example of service to the poor, homeless, and young. By Father Baker's ardent concern for those in need, inflame our hearts and lives with compassion for the poor, justice for the oppressed, hope for the troubled, and courage to those in doubt. We pray through the intercession of Our Lady of Victory, if it be your will, that your servant, Nelson Baker, may one day be canonized. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.